Good morning, church. We are so glad that you decided to join us this morning for this time of praise and, and fellowship and communion together in Bible study. We want to begin this morning by telling you a story. It's a story about a Philistine army and an Israelite army. They, they come together in battle, and the Philistines send out their champion. He's a giant, and the entire uh, Israelite camp is scared by him. He's challenging them to battle, and they're scared. And it looks like the Philistine army is about ready to win when all of a sudden the Israelites win. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then if I would up may hide the light of day. The mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Jesus Christ, 
Thank you for the opportunity to share a few words with you prior to our communion service this morning. If you choose to participate in the communion service today and don't have your emblems available, please take the time now, pause the video, and make yourself ready. I'd like to start by asking you a question. Are you truly happy or blessed today? Last week during Duane's communion presentation, he centered his thoughts on these three words, the last three words that Jesus used. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and he died. The perfect sacrifice for mankind's sin had been made. And then on the third day, Last week, a lot of people around the world celebrated Easter with the resurrection of our Lord. Once again, I ask, are you truly happy or blessed today? In the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus begins to reveal himself to his followers. But some of the followers didn't believe the reports that Jesus had risen from the dead. I'd like to read from you from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 20 and 24 through 29. When it was evening, the first day of the week, the followers were together. The doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Then Jesus came and stood in the middle of them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The followers were thrilled when they saw it was the Lord. Thomas, called Didymus, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other followers kept telling Thomas, We saw the Lord. But Thomas said, I will not believe it until I see the marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side. A week later, the followers were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came in and stood right in the middle of them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand here in my side. Stop being an unbeliever and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you see me. Those who believe without seeing me will be truly happy, or some versions render blessed. As we prepare to take this bread and this cup in the remembrance of Christ's death, let's take a few moments and go to God in prayer. Would you pray with me? Father God, we are so grateful that you loved us and that you sent your Son to be the sacrifice that he gave his life on that cross, that he was broken, and that we are truly blessed, Father, because we do believe. And it's through your Son that we pray. Amen.
Now as we take the cup, let us give thanks again. Again, Father, we thank you for the love that Jesus had for us, for the blood that he shed, because that blood and our belief in the shedding of that blood gives us the cleansing from our sin. Father, bless us as we take this cup. And we give you all thanks and praise in his name. Amen. I'd like to borrow in closing a couple of words from a sportscaster by the name of Tony Caridi. It's a great day to be a Christian, no matter where you are. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tended skies with heavenly dew and framed the worlds with His great mind. So the Israelite army comes on, on the stage with uh, being scared because the Philistine army comes with this giant, this giant named Goliath. And so the Philistine army, they are kind of dominating this battle until all of a sudden the Israelite army brings on this boy named David. And David is just the shepherd boy. And, and so he's not, he's not a fighter. Uh, they give him armor. He says no. All he takes with him is his faith and a slingshot and five rocks. Faith, slingshot, and five rocks. And he goes up to this battle and Goliath laughs at him. This giant laughs at this small boy who has come onto this battlefield with this slingshot and five rocks. But most importantly, his faith. 
And so David comes with this, and he slings up in the air, and the rock, the first one, the stone that he throws from the slingshot, hits Goliath straight in his head and knocks him down. And the Israelites win. He has done marvelous, he has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. He has done marvelous, he has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. He has done marvelous, he has done marvelous things. series this week. We're starting a series which we're, we're calling Rhythms, and we're asking the question, how do we keep our lives focused in a world full of distractions, in a world full of, of chaos? And you, right now, um, we are still learning how to live within a different way of life. Um, we keep hearing people use this terminology, the new normal. Yeah. Um, and, and what exactly does that mean, and, and what exactly does that look like? And I think while it's it's difficult for us, and while this is certainly not something that we want to to go through again, and, and we're all looking forward to um, things returning back to um, how how things used to be, yeah. and just returning to what we used to know as normal. I think we are provided with a good opportunity here, though, as things have have slowed down for us a little bit. You, it used to be that our, our lives were so, you know, just a few weeks ago, our lives were full of so many things, you know, getting kids to and from school, um, going to work, having a social life, going to, to basketball games, going to baseball games, you know, all of these other things. And now things, with everything closed down, things have, have just kind of slowed down right. a little bit for us. And I think we have an opportunity now to really begin to think 
about living intentionally for God, living intentionally in trying to take our Christian walk and living intentionally to the point where I can move from looking like Stephen to looking like Jesus. And so we're going to be looking at how do we do that. And we do that, I think, by allowing God to keep the rhythm, allowing God to set the rhythm and to keep the rhythm of our lives. So we can almost entitle this new series that we're doing, Rhythms. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So we, we, we titled this Rhythms, where we're going with allowing God to keep the rhythm and us to have to learn how to intentionally march to the beat of that rhythm. Yeah, and so if you look at it through a musical sense, hmm. you know, if you're listening to the radio, each song that that comes on that radio, or I don't listen to the radio, I listen to my own songs from my phone into my car, and so all of my songs, they, they each have their own unique rhythm. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't, there aren't many songs out there that have the same exact rhythm. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you could say that those could be your distractions. Mm -hmm. The different rhythms that you listen to in these songs right. are your different distractions. So the ultimate goal that we have is finding that focus mm -hmm. in the world of the different rhythms that we're going by. Yep. How do we find the true rhythm that God has set before our lives? And I, I have a feeling that each rhythm is going to sound different. Right. You know, we learned in our last series, the I Am series, mm -hmm. who we are. And who I am might look different than who you are, Stephen. Right. Um, in a sense. But, but so we all might have these different rhythms that God is placing before us, but we have to decide what that rhythm sounds like. Right, exactly. Yeah, we, we listen to, to the rhythm. We, we allow for God to set that rhythm. We march to the beat of that rhythm. And we do that, I think, by spending time experiencing God, finding new ways, finding intentional ways. And I think that's going to be another key word in this series is in being intentional, yes. living in, intentionally. Intentionally finding ways to experience God, mm -hmm. to grow closer to God, and also to respond to God as we experience uh, Him more. Yeah. And I think as we do that, we will find ourselves, you know, the more we experience God, the more we're going to look like God. Yeah. You know, I think about um, you know, somebody who lived very intentionally for God, somebody who, who grew and um, allowed for, for his life to be a, a, an example of growth in God. I think about Jesus. Yeah. And you know, back in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 41, we have this story of Jesus as a boy. We, we just don't have a whole lot of stories of Jesus as a boy. And I wish we had more just to know what he was like as, as a young child and, and what it was like for Joseph and Mary to try to raise Jesus. Yeah. But we have this, we do have this one story of 12-year-old Jesus and probably a time where he gave his parents a little bit of a fit. And so we read this, uh, picking up verse 41 of Luke chapter 2. It says, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem to the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to custom. And after the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. And thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day, and they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. And when they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And Jesus asked them, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. And then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. So we have this, um, this really neat story, uh, giving us a little bit of insight into the childhood of Jesus. And we see him getting away from his parents for a while, and he's sitting at the feet of, of the teachers, and he's actually teaching them some in the temple. And we, we see this little boy Jesus, and we read the rest of the Gospels, and we read through, and we read from 
you know, Jesus as a boy, even before that, Jesus when he was was born, all the way to the story we looked at last week, where Jesus uh, eventually goes to the cross, dies on the cross, and, and, and raises three days later. And right before Jesus goes to the cross, we find this story of him where he's in the garden and he's praying, and his prayer is to let this cup pass from him, but ultimately his prayer is, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. It was a life completely given over to God. And the question that I have is, how did Jesus, how did little boy Jesus that we read about in Luke 2, become the Jesus that was willing to submit entirely to the will of God and do the will of God in his life? And I think the answer to how Jesus became that person is found in the last verse of Luke chapter 2, where we read that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And what we find is that even Jesus grew. He took time to, to grow and, and become intentional. And we'll see this over the course of this series, times when Jesus will intentionally step away to experience his father, to grow closer to his father, and to respond to his father so that he could keep in rhythm with the will of his father and keep his focus in a world full of distractions. That's good. And so we're going to look at Jesus, but look at ourselves. If you turn over to 1 Timothy, in, in chapter 4, starting in verse 7, we're going to read 7 and 8, kind of 7b, if you, if you say that. Uh, we're going to look at this, and it says, Rather, train yourself for godliness, for whole bodily training is of some value. Godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise to the present life and also for the life to come. Mm -hmm. This idea of train yourself, yeah. this doesn't come naturally. Not at all. You know, it, it's not something that we are born with. It's not something that is, comes naturally to us. Timothy, in the book of Timothy, we learn that we need to train. And it's interesting, um, as you look at some of the other versions, I think it's the New American Standard Bible, actually uses the terminology, discipline yourself for godliness. And so we see this idea, not just of training, but also this idea of how you, you think of discipline. This one's not necessarily something you want to go through. Right. It's not, you, we don't naturally discipline ourselves. We, we don't discipline ourselves for fun, but we discipline ourselves in order to become what we need to become. And so I, I think um, I think that's an important thing for us to remember as we think about living intentionally and keeping it in rhythm. That sometimes it's not always going to be easy. Yeah. It's going to be a, a discipline of yeah. sorts. Yeah, and so how? Hmm. That's that's a big question that I, I came to. I kind of focused on it. The how that, that you were missing in your uh, version of the David and Goliath yeah. story. Um, if we just have this beginning and end, we don't know how to do that. We don't know how it was done. And so for these next couple of weeks, we're going to look at these ways of how we can grow, how we can experience God, mm -hmm. and how we can respond to him through, through things like prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about these ideas of praying, reading your Bible and listening, but we don't really, I think it's kind of one of those things that we just pass on. Right. Like, yeah, we'll pray. Mm. Let's pray. Or, you know, read your Bible and God will talk to you. Mm. It's not something that we actually, I don't know, it's, not, it's like love. Right. You know, I love pizza, but I also love my mother. Like, uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't but, know if your mom's watching. <laughs> I'm sure she will. <laughs> anyway. But we just pass around me, it's just pray about it. Right. Or can you say a prayer for me? So we're really going to look at that. How can you pray and experience God? How can you pray and grow closer to Him? Mm -hmm. It might seem easy, but we use it to last days of the Right. Yeah, I think it's, um, in many ways, we, when we talk about normal, we, we talk about routines, and we get in routines, and, and we... Many of us live and die by our routines. Yeah. Um, and so even our spiritual lives at times, the part that we do experience, oftentimes we do it because it's routine. Yeah. And so it's easy for us to, to pray. It's easy for us to worship. It's easy for us to do this, that, or the other oftentimes because it's what's expected of yeah. us. 
And so what we want to begin to look at is how do we, how do we become more intentional about that so that when we pray, we're not just praying because we're supposed to pray, we are praying because we have spent time experiencing and growing closer to God, and now our prayer is in response to that. Yes. It is our way of listening for God's rhythm in our life, and it's our way to respond and keep our focus. Because we do, we live in a world of distractions, and right now maybe the distractions are a little bit different. Right now maybe the distractions, maybe for some people, might be a little bit less. For some people it might be a little bit more, depends on what you're going through right now. But certainly as we begin to go back to do what we call normalcy in our life, those distractions that we dealt with before are really going to start to, to I think, press in on us. Yeah. We're going to get back to school. We're going to get back to work. We're going to get back to extracurricular activities. We're going to get back to social lives. And if we're not careful, those things are going to create the rhythm. Yeah. And those things are going to, going to become those distractions again. And so now is a good time for us to listen to the rhythm that God is setting for our lives and start marching to that beat. That way, once everything does go back to this normalcy, we're able to just hear or feel mm -hmm. the rhythm that God has created. Right. So that, yes, we can still listen to other rhythms, mm -hmm. but it might look different than it did before this. Yes. It might look in a different way that we are now 100% following. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you guys will join us for the next couple of weeks. We're excited about this, um, this living intentional lives, this, this idea of a rhythm. You know, what's really neat is God invites us to listen to his rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, Stephen, or you out there, but when I'm invited to something, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm like, that means that somebody actually cares enough about me right. to invite them to that birthday party, to invite them to whatever it is, mm -hmm. that wedding, that that anything. And so that makes me excited. Yeah, and absolutely. Listen to this. God, the God, the great I am that mm -hmm. we just studied about, he invites us to listen to that. Absolutely. And that, that gives us so much hope. Yes. Um, you know, it gives us something to live for. It gives us a way to get from point A to point B. To, it gives us a way to get from looking like Stephen to looking like Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to challenge myself, but I'll put this challenge out there for mm -hmm. everyone. But I'm going to challenge Jacob this week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge myself to find out what are the rhythms that I listen to mm -hmm other than the rhythm of God, before we get into anything else, right. before before we figure out how we can listen to God's rhythm, I want to figure out what rhythms I listen to and what rhythms I need to like kind of turn down, yeah. if not off. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a good challenge, a good, good thing for all of us to do is to, to recognize the false rhythms so that we can begin to look for uh, the rhythm of God in, in this life. And I, I'm excited about this. I think this will be a good series. I think this is something that, that we all need. Um, and I think this is something that will be good to help us all grow to become and to look more like Jesus. So, well, I tell you, let's, uh, let's close with a prayer. We hope that you all stick with us and, and join us again next week as we begin to unpack this in more detail. And if you need any like prayers or anything to help get rid of those rhythms, get rid of the, those distractions, comment below just with like the praying symbol, yep. like the video, whatever it is, that way we know that we can be there for you. Right. Absolutely. Or if you have things that you want to open up about that you listen to, put in the comments because I bet you're not the only one yep. that is listening to that rhythm. Absolutely. So I think I want this, or we want this to be more of a, you know, an interactive series, right. because we're all in this together. Yep. You might have a different way to listen to God's rhythm than we even think about. And so those of you out there listening to this, we really could use you too. Yep. Absolutely. So we're all listening to this rhythm that God created. Yes. Absolutely. I think that's good. Like, like Jake said, reach out to us and, and let's... Let's encourage one another as we go through this together. Yes. So, well, let's pray, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll close with, with one more song together. Holy Father, we thank you so much uh, for being the rhythm to our lives. We thank you for giving us what we need to be able to, 
work through this, this world of, of distractions, this world of, of sin, and to hold on to and to live um, like your son. Father, we pray that you will show us different ways that we can uh, become more like Jesus so that we can grow in wisdom and in stature and favor with God and man. God, we pray that you will help us to become more intentional so that we can experience you, find more ways to experience you in our lives, to grow closer to you in our lives. And then, Father, as we respond to that, we pray that you will accept our, our praise, that you will accept our worship, and that we will find ways to show you just how worthy you are of praise. Father, you've done so much for us. And even as we try to give you everything that we are, we know that it's just not enough. So Father, we pray that you will, uh, that you will be pleased with our offering, that you will continue to, to love us and to bless us. Father, we pray that you will allow for the blood of your Son to fill in the, the gaps in our lives and to be a, an offering of grace to you. We love you so much, Father, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name. Oh